right? The war on frequency. I've been talking about this from day one with 432 and the Hertz issue. And so what I recognized is that I've been talking about the same subject the whole time. It's just that there's different perspectives and different approaches to talk about it. So I thought maybe what I'll do today is back up. And before I launch into everything I went in on the missing episode on from April 16th, maybe it was that I sort of plunged into the deep end of the pool and that this is more about, you know, taking steps along this pathway. Because the way I think about this, I do want to share. And only as my perspective and only as maybe it's helpful, but not as this is the truth, right? Not as this is the only way to, to see this, but merely as let me offer you know, the ways that my mind has come to formulate the situation that we're in and how I'm thinking about it. And this has been a lifelong um, mosaic, if you will, like I've been working on this perspective for some time. So I'm going to just check um, because there have been some broadcasting issues. I'm going to keep an eye and make sure that I'm connected and that my mic is on. Um, As we step into what I want to talk about today, which I think will bridge some of the discussions from using, um, you know, literal sound waves and sound frequency into the idea of spiritual warfare and um, the sort of unseen realms that are actually very real, even though we don't see them and we don't have proof of them and most people don't want to talk about them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And the way we're going to discuss it is um, in a way that I've been thinking about these things for a long time, but once again, it's only a metaphor to try to understand something that's beyond what what our consensus reality will really discuss. And that's the third, fourth, and fifth dimension. Now, back in the day, in the late 1800s, um, mathematicians and physicists, physician, no, it's not physicians, physicists, there you go. Mathematicians and physicists came across the idea that there was more than three dimensions. It was in the mathematics they were doing, right? And I'm not going to get too much into that in this episode, but this was a lot of the stuff that I was super into in my 20s. From the time I was a little girl, I was very interested in dimensions. And one of them had to do with the fact that we had a very smart neighbor whose parents did not allow him to have a TV. And he always was coming up with, I mean, he was just a very smart guy. And I remember being on my front driveway and him specifically talking about how there were different dimensions. And that meant that right in that very space, even though we couldn't see it, there could be like somebody else or a creature right there. We just couldn't see it, but they could be occupying the exact same space. This idea scared me to no end. Okay. Freaked me out. But it also piqued a lifelong curiosity that I had for this. So in my early 20s um gosh it might have even been late teens I was reading about some of this mathematics and um one of the books that I've talked about before the dancing wooly masters sort of combined that idea and it was what I was very interested in that the ancients and all these ancient cultures um that at the time anthropology was like saying you know they're not as smart yeah 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 well they had all these theories that actually corresponded to what modern physicists in the last hundred years had been finding out and that it was just a different language but you could see how they were talking about the same thing and in that was the idea of dimensions that there wasn't just the third dimension which is what we're aware of but there was all the way i mean i've i've heard for sure up to 10 but i've heard other um you know, I've heard more than that and I've heard less. Now, this idea, like I said, is over 100 years old. I mean, at this point, we're talking probably closer to 150 years old. And so what did that do to society? Well, one of the most interesting things it did was it seeped into the artist. And many people were trying to conceptualize what that fourth dimension uh, and looked like. Because many, you know, it gets a little tricky with Einstein because he said that the Um, fourth dimension was time and so but it time and space right I think that's how he explained it but it it gets a little bit tricky because he he says it one way but other people have said it other ways so I'm going to talk more about how I've come to conceptualize it because that's a large part of what I fell in love with in my early 20s was art history and the idea how these artists were trying to Um, conceptualize what that actually meant what these higher dimensions would actually be like because they were real right the mathematics proved they were real the problem was we didn't know how to think of them 
we didn't know how to imagine them. And so that was one of the reasons that I liked Cubism as a movement and was about to go back and actually um, study with somebody um, that was, you know, focused on that. And the only reason that I didn't really, um, I was, first of all, I wasn't a huge fan of Cubism as far as the aesthetics of it. Um, But I believe it was also Duchamp who also did a lot of motion. So they were doing it in different ways, right? The the cubist made it like you could see all angles at once. That's one of the things that they're saying about like the fourth dimension or a higher dimension. Like you can see inside to out in a way. You can see all angles at once. And so that's why when you look at a Picasso, it's got like an eye here and this here and everything's all discombobulated. He was sort of trying, but think about it. He's still putting it on two dimensions, so a two-dimensional surface, he's trying to imagine the fourth dimension. That's what he came up with. And I believe it was Duchamp who showed motion. So it'd be like a staircase and then somebody moving up the staircase, but it was just blurry going up the staircase. And that was the fourth dimension. But all this stuff was absolutely fascinating to me. Like, And this was before I got really into studying music. This was just what I was interested in. And like I said, I would have gone back and continued to study in academia pretty seriously if had not been for one of those wonderful coincidental moments where I ran into a guy at Barnes and Noble who had gotten his PhD in anthropology and he was going through a divorce and just severely regretted all of it. (laughs) He had massive debt. He couldn't make a living. His family was falling apart. And one of the biggest things he said, and it was also what I saw and what changed my view about the world entirely was how political it was, that there were certain topics that you could discuss. And if you did, you could get tenure and you could move up the chains. And um, I mean, I think Brett Weinstein's talked pretty exclusively how people can self-regulate or um, self-censor in those environments. And I saw that because it wasn't just the fourth dimension that I was interested in. And I did. I could have gone that route, but I also at the time was very interested in the idea of Atlantis and Graham Hancock's work, that the pyramids were way older than we thought, and, you know, all of this stuff plays in because it feels like there's ancient technology or ancient understanding about sound and physics that we lost and that we were just coming back to in the last 100 years, and that perspective wasn't in academia, it wouldn't fit in academia, so... I got out of academia, and in many ways, I've gone different directions. Um, But one of the places that I went hard into for a while was New Age. And in New Age, this was the idea. I I came across it again um, at the third, fourth, and fifth dimension. And I'm going to read you. I found this website um, because I think there's still a great deal of people who think in this way. Um, And I'm going to explain it it's a it's the way that maybe is the most conventional new age way of thinking of it and i would say it's become part of our consensus because there's so many people who have embraced new age um at this point that i would say maybe it is more part of our consensus but that's relatively new you know for somebody who's been studying this stuff for 25 years i would say it's maybe more in the last 10 5 something like that where way more people don't think this is a crazy idea they won't zone out if you try to talk about it Um, or at least in my world, that seems to be the case. So this is it. Understanding the third dimension from a metaphysical viewpoint can help us grasp these concepts and differentiate between the third, fourth, fifth. Okay, so this is one of the things. Jolie Creighton of Futurism, she says this. Dimensions are simply the different facets of what we perceive to be reality. We are immediately aware of the three dimensions that surround us on a daily basis, those that define length, width, and depth of all objects in our universe the X, Y, and Z axes respectively. Beyond these three visible dimensions, scientists believe that there may be many more. In fact, the theoretical framework of superstring theory posits that the universe exists in 10 different dimensions which govern the universe. So superstring is is a theory that I got into, especially as Brian Greene talks about it. And really it's the idea, for a musician, it's a wonderful idea because it gets to the idea that when you break down the atoms, you know, at at our core were atoms right which is already vibrating and mostly space and then you get inside of that and you at the very smallest i can't remember if it's like photons or uh, photons are light but like in break down the the neutron or the neutrino i don't know I've, I've lost all of my physics understanding at this point it's been so long since i've really been studying this but at the very smallest way that you can break down a subatomic particle all you still just have a string vibrating 
And that's why some people literally would say like, we're just vibration. We're just sound. You know, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And so that would be, you know, that it's all just like, even when you say word, you're talking about the voice, you're talking about a vibration there, right? Vibrational sound. So that's, you know, super string theory. And super string theory is one of the biggest proponents of the idea that there's 10. So she's breaking it down further. This this author, let me see, it's Sherryanna Boyle, which Boyle, Sherryanna Boyle, which I am not advocating nor um, coming against in any way. I literally just look this up to have something to read really fast. And I found her to, because I've read so much literature over this, and even Magenta Pixie was a good resource for many years on this type of mentality. Um, we're basically just going to break down the third, the fourth, and the fifth dimension. Okay, because in the New Age world, if you're in the New Age world, there's a lot of idea that um, for years they were saying like the, we lived in the third dimension like a prison and now we're in this ascension and part of ascension is becoming aware of the fourth dimension, but ultimately we're trying to get to the fifth dimension. Now, the way she describes it is that the third dimensional frequencies have a slower, denser rate of movement and these slower rates of movement, this is where suffering can live. This is because lower frequencies are where the energy of fear, ego, and illusion um, reside. They can be very particular for people with low self-esteem or who are living in high levels of stress. Um, you're more likely to feel separation and powerless in this state of mind. It also says it's important to remember that you have free will and this means you can consciously, consciously choose to move the energy in a way where you can begin to access higher vibrations of love and peacefulness. So the idea is a third dimension is like a prison basically, but it's a frequency prison and we get stuck in it through cycles of trauma. I'm adding in here, she's not saying this, but the this is my expanded view from based off of what she said, um, that our traumas keep us locked and patterns of low frequency and then everybody around us is in trauma or fear or low frequency and it all becomes normal like Stockholm syndrome um, but in reality we're not actually meant to be in these low places not forever not permanently we're not supposed to be you know making our decisions and building our world from that place and that would maybe be what you'd call the fall we fell, our consciousness fell into such a low frequency. And it literally is a frequency of fear. And this is why you have so many simplistic, um, yet truthful um, principles of like, all you have, you know, all you need is love. It's like, it's way easier to understand that than to actually do it to figure out how to raise your frequency. And that's one of the reasons why that I advocate playing music, because I feel like playing music is one of the, the most wonderful ways you can um, take back your frequency and work to raise it. But that's not to diminish how difficult it is because like I said, most of us, we were born into it and entrained by our society and our family and now TV and social media. I mean, so much is coming against you. And that's why for me, it feels like a conspiracy. Okay. It feels like a spiritual war because that would be a spiritual war to keep you at a lower level so that you were unable to access your true power, right? You're just basically constantly in pain and suffering. And to a degree that you accept and you think that that's all there is and that this is life and that God has wanted this for you. Okay, so that's the third dimension. Now the fourth dimension, the way she says it, can be accessed through mindful practices such as meditation, art, music, yoga, breathing, writing, walking, and nature, and more. So I've talked about this too. With disciplines and practice, 4D frequencies help you dissolve the layers of fear so you can step into your true power. This is where you start learning to function on earth as a being of unlimited possibility. You will naturally detach from money, fame, popularity as these are illusions held by the third dimensional frequencies. Many people oscillate between the third and fourth staying true to your practices will help you hold your energy during turbulent times um uh, so yeah in a, in a way what she's saying here i actually agree with especially when she's saying hold staying true to your practices that's one of the things that i really advocate is using music as a spiritual practice because on a daily basis you're doing things to keep your frequency up because one of the things that happens is if you get into fear it's almost like that's the last thing you think you're in. 
it's like it's just so normal I, I don't know how to describe it the best way to say it is like if you're hungry if you're one of these people who gets hangry like I do where it's like if I don't eat um I start to get really angry and I don't recognize that it's because I'm hungry it's just the last thing that I assume even though I know I haven't eaten right but the hangriness takes over and I just get really angry at whatever I'm really angry at and I still don't eat right I lose and so I think that can happen that's where the 3d can be like a real trap because you get in that low frequency and then the last thing you think to do is to get out of it and so when you have these daily practices they remind you every day and over time you start to take back your power now i'm going to go ahead and read what she says about the fifth dimension but i'm going to also go back and explain where i think that the what she has about the fourth and the fifth dimension aren't quite what i would say at this point i would disagree about some of this or maybe just add more to it. Um, so, but let me tell you about the fifth dimension because where I think we're a little bit more in line here. It says, the fifth dimension is where pure unconditional love resides. You know you're in the fifth dimension when you no longer feel the need nor the desire to control or manage what's happening. Bum, bum, bum. That's, that is a beautiful thing. It just is. Instead, you are in awe of the beauty and magic of life. The fifth dimension is like heaven on earth. Some individuals may resist 5D and that is okay. We all have free will. Yet those of us who are open to receiving five dimensional energy will greatly benefit. Okay, so I do really agree with her on the fifth dimension, actually, because I think this is where a lot of new, new age people um, are misunderstood is that they'll come from a place of like acceptance and they'll come from a place of, um, you know, not needing to control, not manage. And a lot of people look at people like that and they think something's wrong <laughs> with them, right? Or they think that they're la di da people. And in some ways they're, they're right. But in other ways, I do believe that that's, I, I believe that when we talk about Christ consciousness or we talk about Jesus's love, we're talking about the fifth dimension and, and up. And from a frequency level, what's happened is it's vibrating at such a fine frequency, such a fine vibration, that fear and control and desire for power, all those things just literally can't be there. They can't hang on there. And this is one of the reasons why if you're somebody who really can access this frequency and maintain it and stay at it, people just bounce off you like the spiritual warfare becomes non-existent for you because it's just doesn't matter how evil somebody's intent is against you they cannot um affect you your frequency is too fine and theirs is too low and it's like water and oil it won't mix it won't match and so i think that you know the getting to the fifth dimension um is something that the new age talks a lot about and i actually agree with it in many ways but where i think i depart from them is more in the fourth dimension because i think that in accepting things that means truly accepting everything right and there's still a lot of spiritual bypassing happening in the spiritual community and i think in many ways um it's been on purpose. I think it's been many of the spiritual teachings there. It's many things are this way. They're 90% accurate, but the 10% they leave out is important. And in many cases, when they talk about the fourth dimension, it's not the way that I see it. And I'm going to share my perspective. Um, but once again, all of this is just theoretical. So the fourth dimension is more where I, and I do believe like we've, kind of merged with it um i guess we've raised our frequency many of us have raised our frequency enough to not only be stuck in the third but in the fourth dimension there still can be manipulative evil things happening and this is where the naivete comes from because I've, I've mentioned on other shows that when i was in my 20s and supernatural things would happen to me i just assumed that it was god you know and i think that that is a little bit of a naive um, perspective and it comes from the fact that when you're just trying to break out of materialism which is basically the third dimension which we've really been stuck in um, you know especially the baby boomers are such materialists right and before that it was sort of a descent into that place and then I think now we're coming back out of it we've been forced out of it in a way but third dimension could be considered material it's like um, what you can see, everything's limited to what you can see here with your five senses, right? There's no sixth, seventh sense. Um, and from that perspective, 
from that third dimension or that materialism, like you have to work really hard to get out of it. Or listen, the young people now, you probably don't, okay? And you probably can't relate to what it was like to be around in the 80s and the 90s. But you had to go really against the grain to even see there was anything beyond this three, three-dimensional three world. And so when it you did, when you experienced something beyond it, you didn't have any categories for it. You didn't have any any... I mean, maybe if you had a biblical perspective, um, I'm not going to say it. nobody did. I'm just, just going to say mainstream the way I was raised. If it was beyond the third dimension, I thought it was God. And I didn't understand that there can actually be supernatural on both sides of the coin. Just the way we have good and bad in this third dimension, I believe that there still is good and bad in the fourth dimension. My belief is that maybe by the fifth dimension, the vibration is too high and that evil or bad or, you know, whatever you want to call that lower type of frequency, it's out, right? By the very nature, it's a lower frequency and it can't be there. But the fourth dimension is tricky. The fourth dimension is very, very tricky because it, it basically, I think it's where some of this supernatural stuff comes from, right? That there's... So the theory now, and I'm going to get into David Icke a little bit here, um, even though I'm not, once again, I'm not advocating any of these people, um, but I want to be able to discuss things because I think we need to have these discussions. And David Icke is very, very good at explaining something. Um, I think he's one of the best at explaining the idea of the frequency and not being able to see these beings that are just out of our frequency, right? And that gets into the electromagnetic spectrum. And the idea that everything is energy, but we as human beings can only see and hear a very, very small portion of it. And so it's very possible, just like my friend said, when I was very young, to occupy the same space as a being that is vibrating at a different frequency and able to cloak themselves from me, right? And this would be the whole nature of entities. And this is where it's been getting really confusing the last five, six maybe 10 years of, are we talking about, you know, aliens? Are we talking about extra dimensional beings? Are we talking about just the fallen angels and the demons of old that got disembodied, no longer have physical bodies? So they're there. And, you know, as they say, like the prince of the air, they're, they're there, but we're not able to see them. And they're always trying to get back. And, you know, new age is always trying to like get to the fifth dimension. But what if there's these beings that are trying to get into three dimension? Like we don't think about these things. So that's why I'm saying that new age has a lot of interesting perspectives, but I don't think it has the full perspective. And it can be dangerous in that way. Because um, one of the things that happened to me is opening yourself up to all of this stuff, assuming it's all God, and not having the discernment to recognize the difference between a unifying loving frequency and the trickery that can happen in the fourth dimension and there's a lot of trickery and you can get good at discerning it but you got to know that you got to learn to discern it and if you don't even know that and you're just from the space of like oh the fourth dimension is just a place to meditate and and you know why not astral voyage there it's like you're, you're thinking of it all as an expansion but maybe it's just an oversimplified view so that's where this comes full circle back into frequency war or spiritual war. We're really talking about the same thing because in a way, spiritual could be seen as maybe things vibrating at a finer vibration. And so they're not as tangible in our world, but that also could be a result of a fallen world. It might've been that before we fell into this trap of the 3D or this lower frequency, all of that was unified. And it wasn't only the fifth dimension, it was the fifth dimension and the third dimension. And what the fourth dimension would be in that, I don't know, my, my, like I said, it was just a theory. Um, and it maybe falls short. Um, but I would say maybe the fourth dimension acts like a bridge between the two between a higher vibration and a lower vibration. And I would also say that the fourth dimension has maybe been a prison for certain entities um, that don't have humanity's best interest at heart. And that that's where this war comes from. I do believe that I found many, many answers only in the last four years through more of a biblical um, perspective. And this is after many, many years of being in new age and studying about aliens and just knowing there was truth to it. And that's why 
like I'm still a work in progress. I'm still trying to understand these things. And I'm merely presenting them here today because I do feel like being aware of the idea that we are unaware <laughs> of a lot can save people's lives at this point because it's just come for those that have eyes to see it feels very real that we're in a war whereas 20 years ago it was sort of harder to recognize that you were in a war I think you only felt that way if you were really coming up against the matrix and that would be another metaphor is saying like the third dimension is like the matrix right but that we can actually exist outside of the matrix we've just forgotten how and that when you try so much of this matrix comes against you including your friends and family unbeknownst to them even um the whole agent smith thing which i've talked about but i probably should clarify meaning that like they're kind of taken over you know there's something compelled in them it's like she was saying that fifth dimension is unattractive to some people like let's say you are trying to go to the fifth dimension and you're doing it and your vibration is getting finer that can feel like somebody's eyes who hasn't seen the dark and all of a sudden the sun's shining in it and it hurts and they shy away and they push away from it you can have friends and family doing that from a very unconscious place the minute you start to really really seriously do this work of reclaiming your own power and your own authority which is what we're asked to do by jesus um we're asked to um you know be the body of christ and to stand up with him and to do our part but once again we always end up going back into a materialist thing and um you know we end up interpreting it through our very limited perspectives and when we do that it causes all this division it's like it can all be used it's, it can be like that 90 to 10 you know you can have something 90 percent correct but the 10 percent that you have wrong is actually damaging and harmful so i want to make sure that i'm presenting all of this as just a thought experiment today and maybe it will help you to have your own thought experiment today but there's only really one point i'm trying to make and that is that you are not meant to feel um, the suffering. We're not meant to feel the suffering all the time. And then if you recognize it or you see it as something's gone wrong and we're in a war, then it actually is more hopeful. I mean, it's a terrible thought to think we're in a war, but it can also be very hopeful that, you know, that we could get out of it, that this isn't the way we're supposed to be. This isn't how life is meant to be lived. And that you aren't meant to be suffering all the time. And it doesn't make it any easier, to be honest with you. I think it still makes things very difficult. But at least it can help you to reclaim your true purpose and your power as to what you are doing here. And how you can truly serve and help. Because I think most human beings truly do want to. And we're in the middle of such a mess right now. And I think that's, I think the spirit is telling me that that's as far as I need to go today on that subject. Uh, see, when I talk about this, it's amazing. I can just talk and talk and talk. It's already been 45 minutes. So um, any questions about that, I'd love to hear. And I'm certainly going to be talking about it more. Um, but I do find, um, to bring the whole topic full circle, I find music to be one of the weapons that we have in this war and it's an incredible weapon and it's a weapon that's meant for everybody. It's not meant for the beautiful people or the talented people or the cool people or the ones that were smart enough to pick it up as a child and keep playing. Any age, any person can get involved with music and it can make a huge difference in your life because it's meant to. It's, it's meant to be a gift for you to take. Now, some people might be more connected to that gift than others, and that gets into the idea of um, if we're in a symphony, like let's say that just like the body of Christ metaphor works, uh, so does a symphony, like we're all meant to be playing our part. And when we are, we're helping each other to play our parts in tune, right? And we're inspiring each other. And the more of us that sit down at that symphony chair and pick up our instrument, the more um, that we can write this ship right the more that we can try to figure out truly what it would be like um you know to live in the garden of eden if uh the promises of god were completely fulfilled to us what would that look like can we start to imagine that direction rather than you know what i fall prey to too imagining um the end of the world and imagining you know the suffering and imagining all the terrible things that are that seem to be constantly threatened at us but that's one thing that i'll say is that i think the enemy only really has threats 
once you truly accept that what Christ did on the cross was for all of us and that it was a victory and that maybe this is where, you know, the fourth dimension of time, you know, you can kind of stand outside of it for a minute and accept it and get to that fifth dimension and accept it. Um, even when it, right in front of your face, it doesn't seem to be the case. It feels like things are getting way worse, actually. But when you're able to step outside of that and really speak to the power of Christ in your life, then that enables you to step up into who you were meant to be and what you were meant to be. And when we're doing this, we have to be careful to not look at each other and think, okay, I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do based on what I know I'm meant to do. No, I mean, that's the evangelical way. And that's part of what's just torn apart religion and Christianity and all the fighting and all of this and that is so many times that is our ego taking over again. That's that trickery again, making us think that we're doing the right thing. But in reality, we're not, any one of us is not meant to have the full picture. If we're down here and we're in a body, we don't have the full picture. The best we can do is have faith. And that faith can, you know, we can hold steady to that faith and that faith will guide our actions and it will guide when we're meant to encourage another brother and sister, but it, we're very, very limited. And we have to have faith in each other that each other knows what they need. That, that your connection to God, your connection to Christ is what will guide you to lead you to your action. And it might look very different from what I think you should be doing, right? But I'm very limited and I'm full of sin and I'm very much just trying to, you know, walk the path that God has given for me. I certainly don't have the authority to go around telling everybody else what they should be doing. So that's not what I'm meant to be doing here today. And I bring that up because I've even seen that a lot in the truth or community. And I've seen that a lot with people saying, oh, you should be speaking out on this or you should be doing this. And by now, like four years later, it's starting to really reveal itself. You know, a lot of people are kind of showing their true colors. Um, but that's not really the way it's meant to be, right? I mean, that's where I sometimes I still go back to new age a little bit or just um, some of the things that I learned from new age, which would be like being present and really honoring other people and really connecting on a level where you know everything's working out exactly the way it should and that you can stop listening to all the thoughts and the opinions of your own ego you can get pretty good you know through meditation of being able to weed that out and not coming online and coming from that place because now you're just adding to the noise and you're just adding to the confusion and so much of the confusion is coming from the enemy at this point so many people are so confused and I'm one of them about what we should be doing where we should be I deal with that all the time. So I don't want to come on here and spread that confusion. There's really only one thing that I'm super clear about. And that is that. <laughs> Actually, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm that clear about. Um, that's funny. Now that I think about that, what am I super clear about? Um, I'm super clear that music is a portal to higher dimensions and that it can be used for both good and bad from our vantage point and that we might want to get to that place of the fifth dimension but we won't get there by spiritually bypassing what's in front of us we actually have to accept what's in front of in front of us we have to let go of our ideals that our own limitations and truly become faithful servants of Christ and play the part that we were meant to play every single moment obedient. And that's scary for me to admit that here. Um, I've been very, very quiet. I've been very personal with that. But I'm going to trust now that it's what I was meant to say today. And that through teaching music, through bringing music, through bringing some of my thoughts about all of this, um, that I'll be able to help somebody, even if it's just one other person, because if I'm helping one other person to step up into who they truly are, then they can help somebody else step up into who they truly are. And really, it doesn't have to take the whole world. I've heard this many, many times because the frequency is so much higher and finer 
when you're vibrating in a love space or a unity space, that it doesn't have to be the exact numbers, right? It doesn't, I've heard that at one point, I, for years, new age was like, oh, we're at 51%. Thank God, you know, 51% is vibrating at a higher frequency. You know, there's all these claims in new age for many years, and now we're in the new earth. I don't know if any of that's true. I'll be honest with you. To me, I'm still in a day-to-day -day, um, battle for my mind. And that is where maybe the fourth dimension, another place maybe we could think of the fourth dimension is inside of our own minds. And that is where the spiritual warfare, the frequency warfare is trying to get. So if you're looking for something today, if you need something to help you to hold the line, to remember the love that you are, remember that you're not alone, I'm going to recommend music and I'm going to recommend you listen to it. I'm going to recommend you try to play it. I'm going to recommend you sing, even if you sound absolutely terrible. I'm going to recommend that you get out into some nature and that you sing out there or you listen to the singing and the music of nature. Oh my gosh, the sounds of nature are just extraordinary, way beyond what man has been able to do. So do those things for you today if you need it. And I'm bringing that up because I'll be honest with you, the last few days, um, I got hit pretty hard and I needed to rest. I mean, there's just a lot going on and there's a lot to be afraid of and there's a lot grabbing our attention and there's a lot of uncertainty, but there's a place inside of you, inside of your own mind that you can get to where love is the truth and it makes all of the rest of this truly seem like an illusion. And you can dissolve that illusion through the power of your authority of reclaiming that space in your mind. And if you're listening to this today, then you are probably closer than you think. Because frequency wise, I don't think you would have been sticking with me this long <laughs> uh, through this discussion if that weren't the case. So I want to encourage you on that. And I guess that's a lot of what this show is really about because um, I do really want to reclaim music. I want to make a David's Army band where it's people whose hearts are in the right place and they're playing music from the right place. And it's the kind of people where it said like they're not interested in fame or money or, you know, what did it say here? You're, you're already detached from money, fame and popularity because you see them as illusions, not because you're sacrificing them because you truly just see it as illusion right a vibrating string not that important but that you can play music um, from a place of love and unity and that those vibes will go out so I want to inspire David's army band but I also want to inspire anybody who just needs encouragement right now because for whatever reason it really feels like we're in the thick of it and I have more theories on all of that I've got theories on everything um, but I'm going to spare you because I want to uh, honor your time. And I'm going to um, stop there and just talk a little bit about um, the fact that my piano that's been tuned to 432, which is, you know, also about frequency, right, but from a more um, fourth dimensional, third dimensional place. Um, and that is what I find is that the, the metaphor works, the symbol works, like things from the fifth dimension can be like symbolic, whereas they're actually physical but they're somewhat the same energy. And so from a, a spiritual or a fifth dimensional place, the vibrations are really high and fine. But um, from a fourth dimensional place, there's a lot of manipulation in frequency through things that are, are both, you know, fine and very tangible. And maybe that's like the what you get off of a TV or the 5G or all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's for real, right? It's like a little, I'm literally mean a frequency at that point. But when I'm talking about it from another perspective, it's like being trapped in lower frequency versus being able to vibrate at a love frequency, which truly is our natural place. It truly is our natural state. It's just that we've forgotten that. And that's why I talk a lot about remembering who you are because it's more natural than you think. It's so wild. It's so wild, this world that we live in, I'll tell you what. And it's not for the faint of heart. So anybody who's out there surviving, I just want to send some love to you and some encouragement. 